wherever you are watching us from, for taking your time to be together with us, that we may hear what God has for us. Knowing that for us to live, we have to hear from God. For the just shall live by faith. And faith cometh by hearing. And by hearing the word of God. So you are most welcome. Still in John 17 verse 22. Speaking of the glory that Jesus gave to us. And the reason he said was that we might be one. Even as they are one with the father. In other words that we may a be able to experience the same experience that Jesus experienced here on earth. And that is why he said, even as my father has sent me, so have I sent you. So we are here to represent our Lord. We are here to establish the kingdom and the manifestation of its glory where we say it, that it is the tangible and the visible manifestation of the supernatural and we have been speaking concerning the mountain of the house of God and this is what the Bible says in Isaiah 2 verse 2 the Bible speaks of that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established on top of all other mountains and nations shall say come let us go into the house of Jacob that he may teach us his ways for from Zion shall his law come from and his the word of the Lord from Jerusalem so it is God's intention that his mountain, the mountain of his house, be established upon and above all other mountains. And when the mountain of the house of the Lord is established above all other mountains, then nations or people shall flow they shall flow into the house of God. And this is the intention of the people who are coming into this house. Their desire is that the God of Jacob might teach them his ways. So they are coming to know the ways of God. And we all know concerning what the psalmist spoke about the children of Israel. They knew or they were shown the works of God. But to Moses, he made his ways known unto him. And so the people are gathering and coming into the house of God that they may learn the ways of God. Why? So that because the mountain of the house is above and established upon all other mountains, that they may ascend and climb and be on top of their lives because that is the intention of God. The intention of God is he said that we are blessed and he said that we are the head so we are on top. That we are above. We are on top and not beneath. We are lenders and not borrowers. We are above. Seated with Christ at the right hand of God the Father above. That is God's intention for his people to be above on top where his house is on top of all other mountains. But it will only happen by the people of God learning the ways of God. Learning the ways of God. And for your information, there are two mountains here. There are two mountains. There is the mountain of the house of God. And if you read in Matthew 4 verse 8, the Bible speaks of the tempter, the devil, when he took Christ and he put him on top of a mountain. He put him on top of a mountain. 
and he showed him the kingdoms, its power, and its glory. He showed Jesus the kingdoms of the world, the powers, and the glory of them. And he said to him, bow to me, and I will give you all these things. So there are two mountains. And today, as I speak, I'm speaking of climbing or going in going into the mountain of the house of God without compromising or faithfulness in climbing that mountain. We have to be found faithful. Why? Because there is the mountain of the house of God and there is the mountain that the enemy, Satan, took Jesus and showed him the kingdoms of the world and their power and their glory. So my question is today, which mountain are you in? As you ascend to your position for your purpose, for whatever God has called you as an assignment here on earth, which mountain are you in? Are you in the mountain of the house of God or are you in the mountain that the devil showed Jesus and the kingdoms of the world and their glory and their power? In, in that mountain where Jesus was, the Bible tells us that he was in the wilderness. He was in the wilderness. And in that wilderness, he was there to be tempted. He was there to be tempted. And there were three temptations. And we have spoken of uh, as being as kings and priests. And the three temptations, they signify or stand for a, a, a category of temptations in our lives for us to be on top of the, or on top of, of the mountain. And, and the temptation number one was that Jesus was requesting or asked to turn bread, stones into bread. And, 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 and that is the, the, the level of a common man. The level of a common man. His desires, his needs, bread. And speaking of that, it speaks of, of little, little things, the common things. He was asked to turn stones into bread to satisfy himself as we are climbing the mountain these are the temptations that we'll encounter on our way to the mountain on our way to the mountain the temptation of a common man bread and whatever god desires for us as we are being tempted he is requiring faithfulness as we ascend, as we climb the mountain, he is requiring faithfulness. And that is why in the temptation of a common man, it is, we are asked, if you cannot be faithful with the little things, who then? The Bible says, to whom who is faithful with little things, he is faithful in much. So the temptation number one, we are tempted with little if we are found faithful with that little, then we are faithful even in much. Temptation number two, it is the temptation of a priest because it is the tempter took Jesus on a pinnacle of the temple and told him that he threw himself because angels will hold him. Speaking of priest, we are speaking of service. Service and whatever God desires from us, as we serve, the Bible asks Jesus, saying, if you cannot be faithful with that which is another man's, who will give you yours? And the temptation number three, which we are looking at, it is the temptation of kings, because it speaks of the glory and the power, where Jesus was shown those kingdoms of the earth and their powers, and it speaks of the glory and God Jesus said you cannot serve two masters you cannot serve mammon and God and he said that if you cannot be faithful with the unrighteous mammon who will give you the true riches speaking of the glory and the power true riches so there is those who are called and there are those who are chosen and there are those who are found faithful. And if you look in the book of, of, of Revelation chapter 12, where it speaks of those that overcame, those that overcame, who overcame by the blood and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives, that even, they, even to death in the 
verse 10. Verse 10, the Bible says, And those who are with the lamp, those who are with the lamp, we are the called, the chosen, and the faithful. Those are the three categories. There are those who are called, there are those who are chosen, and there are those who are faithful. So as we climb this mountain of the house of God, that we, it might take us where it is on top of other mountains, the, 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 the requirement for our journey is faithfulness. If you are faithful with little, you will be faithful with much. If you are faithful with serving other peoples, God will give you your own. If you are faithful with the unrighteous mammon, God will give you the true riches. And now, the Bible says that the, the devil showed him. He showed him. He showed him. Now, the principle here is the principle of perception because it is what you see that you become what you see is what you become and this is what god told abraham in genesis 13 verse 14 and 15 when they were separated with lot and he said to abraham lift up your eyes as far as you can see from where you are i will give you so the devil was showing jesus because he knew what you see is what you are or what you become or what you get and you will see this in in genesis chapter 30 verse 39 where Abraham, where Jacob and Laban struck a deal of the, the, the of Jacob saying that don't pay me I will I will serve you but I request you that you separate the flocks those are speckled spotted and wrinkled and you take them let me remain with the plain ones and with these plain ones if they bring forth the wrinkled or the speckled then or the spotted then they will be mine and the Bible says that and the Bible says that uh, he took trees, poplar kind of cashnut trees, and, 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 and he made those trees the white color to appear. He piled, he piled those rods. And the Bible says, where the cattle were going to drink water, he did put those rods there. And when the cattle came to drink water, and they beheld the rods, they conceived what they saw. That is the principle. The principle here, the devil was showing Jesus the kingdoms and their powers and their glories that what you perceive is what you conceive. And what you conceive, because the animals, when they perceived the rods, when they conceived, they conceived specked and spotted and ringsacked cattle. So, it is what you are exposed to that you perceive and what you perceive that is what you conceive what is conceived is what you believe and what you believe is what you receive so god said to abraham as far as you will see i will give unto you and also the devil said to jesus these things and he showed he the devil showed him all these things and said i will give unto you god said to abraham as far as you will see, I, 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 I have given you. The devil shows him and tells him, I will give unto you. So, where is your person? What are you seeing? As you are climbing, as you are ascending into the top of this mountain of the house of the Lord that has been established upon other mountains. So, the devil will take you on top of the mountain. But demands you compromise. Because he asked Jesus bow to me and i will give you all these things up so the devil will take you in the top of the mountain he, and he will demand that you compromise he will demand that you bow so we are here to encourage ourselves knowing that we are climbing on a mountain and we have an enemy who will also he, who also has his own mountain and he will show us things, but he will demand that we bow before him. He will demand that we compromise on our way to the top of the mountain. The devil's demands is for us to accept of standards that are lower, lower standards 
than is desirable. That is speaking of backsliding because living below your revelation of what you know or living below or compromising. You see, compromising has other synonymous names. Speaking of maybe we will speak to ourselves and say to God, God will understand that I need a job. God will understand. So there are things that we'll try to do as we ascend, as we climb, as we go up into this mountain of the house of the Lord, but the enemy demanding for us to compromise, we will encourage ourselves and try, and try to convince us that God will understand he will allow allow us and he will understand that the way the things are the way the economy is the way the nations are the way things are going god will understand that is a trick of the enemy trying to compromise you as you go on top of the mountain he will even try to bargain with us if you bow i will give you we will and for those of us who are climbing this tree let us know that there is no place for bargaining we will not bargain with the enemy we will not bargain with the devil he will allow us to co accommodate accommodate some things in our lives as we continue as we go on he will try to strike a deal with us that is compromising or trading out uh, some things or concerning our character or he may tell us we need a consensus for 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 uh, for me to give you these things uh, uh, we need a, a consensus uh, uh, let me tell you that as you go as you go up into this mountain whatever you compromise here when you are going down when you are going up when you will reach at the top of the mountain that is the thing that the enemy will use to bring you down don't bargain don't compromise don't accommodate things that are lower than the standard that god desires for us so we are climbing on the mountain so the enemy shows jesus the things the kingdom but if you look in second chronicles 16 verse 9 the bible speaks of the eyes of the lord they are going to and fro the, throughout the whole earth that he may show himself the devil is showing but, she, but God's eyes are going to and fro through the world that he may show himself on behalf of them whose heart is perfect towards him. The devil is seeking for those who will compromise and bow that he may give those things he had shown them. But the eyes of the Lord are going to and fro throughout the whole world seeking for a perfect heart the devil is seeking for a compromising heart but god is seeking for a perfect heart that he may show show himself hallelujah that he may show himself on behalf of them he wants to flex his muscle on our behalf as we climb this mountain on top of other mountains in the house of god because god wants to show himself on our behalf he wants to show himself hallelujah so don't bow don't compromise hallelujah because what you compromise to as you climb will control you when you arrive to that mountain jeremiah 33 verse 3 the bible says call unto me and i will answer you and i will show you you see the devil showed jesus god is saying he wants to show himself and god interestingly does not only want to show himself he also wants to show you so he says call unto me concerning those things that you feel they become a hindrance a barrier an opposition in your life for you attaining your destiny which is your on top of the mountain in whatever 
ladder that you are climbing may it be career or a professional or a ministry or a church whatever you are doing god is saying call unto me i will answer you i have the answers i am the answer to life's questions and after i've answered you i will show you i will show you great and mighty things that you know not Leave alone those things that the enemy has shown you. Now God is saying, as I show myself mighty on your behalf, I will also show you great and mighty than those you have seen. In other words, what you have seen, if what you have seen and what God is desiring with your life and what he is desiring to show you that which you have seen is like a tip of an iceberg or a drop of water in a bucket i will show you great 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 and mighty things that you know not and that is why the bible says concerning second corinthians chapter 2 verse 9 these things as it is written eyes have not seen ears have not heard neither have they entered into the hearts of men the things that god has prepared for those that love you that love him there are things that have been prepared for us we that love the law these things that have been prepared and in verse 10 the bible says that these things have been revealed to us through the holy spirit we have been given the holy spirit that he might reveal these things that he might reveal these things and after that these things have been revealed unto us verse peter chapter 2 verse 9 the bible says but you after the revelation after the revelation of these things now peter is saying but you are a chosen generation you are a royal a kingly kingly priesthood a holy nation a peculiar people that you may show forth shikawa. you see they never show jesus but when god appears he says I will show myself on your behalf. Then he, then he says, call unto me. And after I have shown myself, I will show you. Hallelujah. Things that ears, things that eyes, things that the heart of men have not perceived. And after he has shown you, now he says that through the revelation that you may show for these things. Uh -uh. That you may show for them. It is not only God showing himself or God showing you. He also wants you to show forth those things that he had shown you through the revelation of the Holy Spirit. He wants you to show forth those things. Speaking of his praises, that you may show forth his praises here on earth. And that word praises speaks of excellence. That as you climb this mountain of the house of God that is established above all other mountains that you may show forth. Show forth to the nations. Sir. God says I want to put you as a display to the nations. Sir. What I can do to those whose heart is perfect towards me. Who have not bowed down and compromised their way up into the mountain. I will show forth that we may show forth his excellence, his majesty, his glory, his power, his anointing. Oh, yes, hallelujah! His glory and his riches that we might show forth. We have been, we are not speaking of showing off. There is a difference of showing off and showing forth. Showing off comes from pride, but showing forth comes from humility and the grace of God. Where Paul says, I am who I am because of the grace of God. I labor, yet not I, but the ashat and arabo, but the grace of God. That is showing forth the goodness of God, showing forth the love of God, showing forth the faithfulness.
goodness of God showing forth the mercies of God showing forth we are called to show forth the goodness the mercy the splendor the riches the glory the power the honor the majesty we are called to show forth because we serve a great God an excellent God that to the end, Psalm 32, Psalm 30 verse 12, of, that to the end that my glory may sing praise. You see, we spoke, we are speaking of Jesus, John 17, 22, where he said, the glory that you have given unto me, I have given unto them. And now Psalm 30 verse 12, of, the Bible says, that to the end, to the end of climbing my mountain, to the end of arriving to my destination, to the end of attaining my destiny, that my glory, the glory that Jesus has given me in John 17, 22, that glory might sing praises unto him. It shall not be silenced because and not be silent because the enemy will try to compromise you as you climb the mountain so when you attain the glory will be silenced by the things you compromised when you are going up but david is saying to the end my glory shall not be silenced because i shall not compromise i shall not bargain with the enemy i shall not accommodate things that are not necessary in my life in my working place in my business in the ways of God I shall not compromise so my glory shall not be silenced but to the end it shall sing praises unto my God and my God I will give you thanks unto thee forever you see as we attain our journey of reaching on top of the mountain we are reaching there by the ways of god because the people said let us go into the house of the god of jacob that he may teach us his ways he may teach us his ways it is the ways of god that will help us attain our destiny of reaching in the top of the mountain without compromising the issue here is compromising for many are called but few are chosen and fewer are faithful god is seeking for your faithfulness that he may entrust his riches hallelujah that he may trust as a king because we have said that this temptation is the temptation of kings it is the temptation of power and glory and jesus said if you cannot be faithful with the unrighteous mammon who will give you the true riches the true riches are the glory the true riches are the power of god so as we climb this mountain let us be faithful and when we shall be found faithful god shall trust us with the true riches in the name of Jesus. The Lord bless you. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We give you all the glory. May we be found faithful as we ascend into the house of your mountain that you have lifted above all other mountains. It is above. It is above all other mountains. May we be found faithful in our lives, oh God. For many are called, fewer are chosen, and fewer are, are faithful. We thank you because the grace of faithfulness is upon our lives. In Jesus' name we pray, trusting and believing.